Just give me two seconds. I'm gonna grab the sunscreen. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, hey, what up, y'all? Can't wait. It's beach day. It's 90,000 degrees outside. I'm so excited to just dip in the water, relax. There's some reports of like this megalodon in the water. Like those things are even real, honestly. I, whatever. Stupid sharks. I mean, what could they possibly do anyway? What's up guys, James here from Reflect the Screen, and you're right, I still have my beach attire on, because like, I'm still gonna go, who, who cares about an 80 foot shark? Ooh. But today I review the Meg, which is pretty basic in terms of its storyline, it's an 80 foot shark from the prehistoric days that's woken up by a group of scientists that get a little too adventurous when they go into the deepest part of the ocean previously not discovered by other people because, well, you know, maybe for good reason. There's a megalodon in the water. A billionaire named Morris, who's played by the office's Rain Wilson, invests over three billion dollars in this discovery mission, which is headed by Zhang, played by Winston Chow. One day, they break through to the deepest part of the ocean, which also includes, like I said, the megalodon. A crew of three people gets trapped, and they turn to the only man who has escaped the Meg, Jonas, played by Jason Statham. That's the first of many challenges that this crew faces when, you know, of course, leading a shark that is of this size to regular waters, you know, where people swim and go to the beach and stuff. Now, the first half of the movie is actually engaging. For the first 30, 45, Five minutes I'm having fun you know it's uh, it opens with Jason Statham's character in the Philippine trench on a mission gone wrong and he has to choose whether to save a majority of the crew or save as many people as he can and if he tries to do both everybody dies so the movie is very fast-paced in the beginning and I, I liked how it opened on a strong note you know the writing wasn't trying to be bigger than itself the movie itself wasn't taking itself too seriously I mean hey it was almost comical too in some of the line delivery by Jason Statham I liked it and I thought it, it really worked it was really cool to see Bing Bing Lee who plays Su Yin, right alongside Jason Statham, I thought they had really good chemistry, and it was cool that there was this little, you know, uh, maybe they like each other a little bit, you know, so there's a little bit of a romantic appeal, but it was just fun because they were go they were jabbing at each other with jokes, and the, the film really wrote to the characters in that first half, which was cool because I didn't expect that from the Meg. What's really cool is the first half's humor. I, I thought that it, it worked. Like I already said, you know, Cliff Curtis, for example, he plays Mac, who's the coordinator of this entire mission. He has great side-by-side -side moments with Jason Statham. I mean, Cliff Curtis is fun. It worked very well. You know, there were some sassy comments. There were some comments that were made that you thought fit really well. The comedic timing was there for Cliff Curtis. And I mean, hey, if I'm going to continue with the positives here, Ruby Rose wasn't the worst part of this entire film. Not just of the first half, but of the entire film. So outside all that acting and the positives in the first half, I thought the CGI was also passable. I mean, it looked fine. Nothing was too glaringly bad, and I enjoyed it for the most part because it helped immerse me into the film a bit more, so I was able to have a good time with it without worrying about, oh, look at that, that's clearly green screen. So here we go, right? We're done with the first half of the movie. 30, 45 minutes in, I'm like, oh man, I really dig this. The camaraderie amongst the crew members, it's really cool. What can go wrong? Only up from here, right? Wrong. So. so so wrong. The movie really is a tale of two halves, the first half being, like I said, not too serious and fun, the writing was good, and then the second half, which is, we're trying to become a drama? I, I don't get that. The movie became really melodramatic, and Jason Statham's character, right alongside Bing Bing Lee's character, they were very, I don't know, like, they became, kind of, it was kind of like a soap opera feel, like they, it didn't feel, it felt just weird. The tone went from comical to drama and now it didn't work. The movie spent way too long in moments like that where they dragged on the drama and the serious tone and we get it but this is not a serious movie. This shark doesn't exist. Let's just be kind of candid and zany like we were in the first half. Also I have a question for director John Turtletop. Did you let Paige Kennedy write the second half of this movie? Because he was in it way too often. I mean he was given every single line in the book. There was a stretch for 15 minutes where it was Paige Kennedy Kennedy the movie. I didn't understand it. The direction was weird in that moment because Paige Kennedy is the worst part of this film. And not only is he the worst part of the film, the movie plays to that token black guy stereotype again. All of a sudden he's the only one rapping on a boat. And of course, there's that joke again. I can't swim. I hate that. I hate that stereotype. I hate all that. Let's just do away with that. It's lazy writing. It's incredibly lazy writing. So, part of me really wants to believe the second half woes of this movie is because the studio held the film back right? It's a PG-13 film about a monster like this shark, the Meg, and it should be rated R, right? Well, probably was rated R in the beginning, but John Turtletop said too, bloody disgusting in an interview, that there were many things he had to cut out to maintain the PG-13 rating. So, all the gore he had planned, 
cut out. And I noticed that too, because they were straying from a lot of that gore in the second half, especially with these crazy kills by this Megalodon. But not only was John Turtletop not given full control over the project it seemed, Jason Statham told Collider in an interview that he signed on for a film that was totally different from the final product. So you're starting to see this little pattern, right? Maybe the second half of the movie was not what it was intended to be because of the studio. So there you have it. I'm upset because it could have been so much more. The Meg was great in the first half. The Meg was terrible in the second half. So honestly, do you need to rush for this movie? Not really. You can watch it on Netflix. Actually, if I saw it on Netflix initially, I think that the rating probably would have been better for this movie. So there you have it, guys. The Meg could have been so much more fun this summer. But the thing is, you're probably going to see it this weekend, right? So when you do, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what you think of my review and give me your take on the film. If you like this review, go ahead and give it a like. And believe me, we're heading into fall. Like I've been saying, it's going to get busy. So hit subscribe. Guys, thanks so much for watching. And I'll catch you at the next screening if I'm not eaten by a megalodon in the water, which I'm still going in.